Well, hello there, YouTube. Okay, I'm connected now. Sorry about that. I just drove around and showed you the, I've shown you the rack and I showed you uh, the road king, what, what Rob's done to her. The, uh, the GM had a, uh, I guess had a, the backrest and stuff for it. I don't know if he had a seat as well, but anyway, got it set up for, uh, for two up so him and his little honey can, can drive around. And uh, what I was also mentioning, <laughs> that uh, had no audio to it, I, I, I'm just, I don't use the Cena enough to, uh, to have all my ducks in a row. I'm always forgetting to turn something on. This time I forgot to turn the 20S on. And then when I did, she didn't connect to the, uh, to the backpack. But anyway, uh, he comes out to see the, the exhaust and stuff on it. And, uh. I was talking about how I thought those black tips, they looked like they were tin, you know. I guess I didn't read the description enough. I just seen them, and that's what I wanted. And I'm sure it probably said they were billet, you know, anodized billet. But anyway, I uh, <laughs> I reached down and touched the thing, and he's like, ah, oh, watch out, it's probably hot, you know. I, You know how you get when you work on stuff. You just get used to the heat. But anyway, wong, wong, wong. <laughs> the exhaust had slid back. He actually goes... He's looking, he's going, that one's farther back, sure as hell. I didn't get the clamp. Um, there must be some seating in or something, probably, I don't know. I thought I had them good and tight, but uh, he was nice enough. He went in, found me a uh, a ratchet and a socket and loosened it up and put her back where she belongs, tightened her down good, and uh, did, the, uh, did the other side. It took about... Heck, probably took a half a turn on the other side. So uh, apparently there's some uh, some seating in. There's no gasket in there, so it just uh, you know it just it's a press fit essentially. But uh, that was awfully nice of him to loan me some tools. I think there's a nine sixteenths wrench that's in the toolkit, but it's that little skinny thing. I that I I wouldn't have enough. Uh, power on that thing to tighten that exhaust clamp I guess in a pinch I could make it work but but uh um, yeah nice seeing your road king oh it breaks my heart god I look at that thing and I'm like that's my freaking motorcycle and I'm like no that's not your motorcycle but, uh, you know, it's, it's that time of year. He had the 
like I said, he he had to pay the the sale price for it. There was no no employee discount on it. And, of course, you know, we run into bikes like that at our store, too, where you just get way too many people looking at it. And, uh, you know, uh, we're not a nonprofit, you know. They're there to make money. And, you know, e even the managers that make that decision that you can't do that, they have to answer to the owners as well, you know. So it's understandable. I mean, sometimes you have to, you know, pay what something's worth and instead of getting the the insider employee deal and that's just the way it goes if you want it you want it but he said uh, it was the freakiest thing he goes ever since he's done that it's just his sales have been phenomenal so he's uh he's making it back quick that's really cool he is one hell of a nice guy if you guys are, even if you're not in the harleys you're one of my spider followers or or just don't even ride at all or not interested in Harleys, whatever the case may be, if you're up in this area ever, just remember exit 111 off of I-5 and just outside of Olympia, Washington. It's in a little subdivision or I don't, I don't know if it's its own city or not, but it's Lacey. I think it's actually just like, you know how they do that? They have those little annexes or whatever they call that. But because uh, they're like on their store, it says Northwest Harley, Olympia, Washington. But anyway, swing in there, <clears throat> ask for Rob. If nothing else, just shake his hand and say you've seen him in a video and Sean said to say hi. Cool stuff. Such a friendly, friendly environment. It's crazy how these people remember my name. The guy I remember, she was looking to see if my tag showed up, but uh, I did ask him to mail them to me because I didn't know, you know, when they'd show up, if I could make it up or whatever. But uh, it's been three weeks now, so probably there. So, hell, they might even be sitting in my mailbox, like she said. But uh, it's crazy how people remember your name and stuff. Now, that's a... Uh, that's a, I mean, as many customers as they have coming and going out of there, remembering people's names, that's awesome. That, you know, that makes customers feel so special. And uh, I'll, I literally stress myself out and not remembering somebody's name. I'll, I'll kill myself to figure out what their name is, you know, if I, if I don't remember. Because, man, you got to, you have to address them by their name. But uh, I'm one of these people, I, I, I meet you twice and I'll never forget your name. But if I meet you once, you know, I'm like, oh, shh. God, I talked to this guy and, you know, it just, it loses, you know, I'll lose it. Or I, you know, I don't see him for a couple years or more, you know, and God, you absolutely know who this person is. And, you know, you've talked with him, helped him out and whatever, and boom, can't remember their name. I, uh, because I'm prone to do that, it's not an age thing. I've literally been this way since I was a little kid, you know. Remember my dad, uh, maybe it's a fear of, fear of failure or something. Remember my dad, you know, telling me the importance of, of remembering people's names, uh, remembering the names of the people that you meet, you know. It's always nice to address them by their name. It makes them feel important. You know, and it just people automatically love that you know their name. Just listen to me talking. I'm impressed as heck that, you know, the cashier gals and stuff remembered my name. You know, that's, that's impressive as hell. So I want that same feeling for customers that I deal with. That's, a, that's very important, or I think it's very important. Makes people feel wanted and cared for, you know. But because I'm... A, you know, until I get to know you a little bit, I, I can, I literally can forget your name. But uh, what I do, just in case other people are that way, if I, uh, you know, I'll come up and uh, I recognize them and they, they show even the, if, if they hesitate a second saying my name, I'll go up and I go, hey, Sean Smoke. I said, how you doing, Bill, or whatever your name is. 
I, I just throw my name right in the in the hello how are you kind of thing but uh, a lot of times like at the store you know because I, uh, I I work in the service department I wear a, a uniform with my name on it so but in the wintertime you know you always you're wearing a sweatshirt or a coat or something like that and your name's covered up I actually have shop coats and stuff too but um, they're a little too warm. It has to be pretty cold before I wear that thing around. But anyway, yet another wonderful experience at the Harley dealer. It just always, always feel welcome. And uh, old Joey, <laughs> he's a riot. He's so funny. I just, I, I don't know, something about that guy just cracks me up. He's pretty wild. But, uh, He's always there with a welcoming, smiling face. Everybody's happy. You can tell people uh, enjoy what they do. And when people, people at these stores go out of their way and tell you how much they love what they do, I mean, unprovoked. I mean, if you weren't happy with your job, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go around just talking about, oh man, I'm living the dream in here. It's like a dream world. It just kind of comes up in conversation. And you can tell these people, it's not a fake used car salesman happy. I mean, these people genuinely enjoy what they're doing. They enjoy their customers and wholeheartedly believe in the product they sell. And I unfortunately completely blew the beginning of this thing because I forgot to turn my 20S headset on. I was checking out my Road King. I'll probably just throw it in there anyway. And uh, subtitle it to say, idiot forgets to turn his device on. And then once I realized I, I had done that, I didn't hear the Cena. It said, uh, you know, phone connected, device connected. When it says phone, that's my iPhone. When it says device connected, that's my uh, Samsung uh, Galaxy Note 4. And, uh, of course, then you hear, you know, UHD mode, UHD voice mode. And that means the, the uh, Cena audio pack is turned on. But uh, I didn't hear her say that, so I had to turn the Cena off, turn the Cena back on, on the GoPro. Then I heard it, so there's going to be some, some cobbled together stuff there at the beginning of this. But, anyway, and I am freaking starving. Absolutely starving my uh, stomach thinks my throat got cut or something I was uh, trying to get stuff done today so I could get out early I wanted to get out at 4 ended up getting out at I don't know did I ever even say what time it was when I left I think I turned on uh, I'd gone down the road a ways before I turned on but anyway I got out of half but I geez I made fantastic time getting up here I made it in about an hour and, what was that, about an hour and 50 minutes. So, that ain't, that's not bad at all. So, uh, I booked. I hauled butt. So, my first gas mileage run, um, after after all the mapping I've done, I'm, and I'm not done with it, I, I still got more to do. But in my first uh, run, not, you know, I going around holding the, you know, doing them wide open throttle runs and so that's and that's why I did the service you know 160 miles early because I was flogging the hell out of this thing I mean I was dogging it I wanted to get I know that thing wasn't flat you know between 5 and 65 it just can't be flat or around 45 to 65 100 RPMs <clears throat> I know it wasn't flat there well I was right and uh, the the uh, one I, I I actually filmed it. I think I've already put. Yeah, I put that video up. Um, you can see where it made all that changes in that RPM range. And now it just it pulls right till it goes whoa 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 and hits the rev limiter. So very happy with that. Not that I drive this thing like that, but you know when you're out with the boys and you're goofing around and you need to flog it to catch up or something like that, you don't want it to be flat and nasty. You know you want it to run. Especially when I know, 
you know, I kept thinking in my head, you know, wait a minute. This thing would go to its 5,500 RPM red line when it was stock. And, you know, of course the torque curve is, I mean, you're losing power at that, at that point anyway. So, you, you know, it's kind of pointless. But I know it, it didn't sign off like it was doing after I uh, did the exhaust and air cleaner. And the air cleaner is just, oh, just barking air, but I'm getting no response. You could clearly tell this thing was getting more air than fuel. So I knew, I had that thing in my head. I said, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to flog this thing right in that area. So it, you know, different loads and different gears and different throttle areas. I'd let it run up there all the way up to full throttle when it passed, you know. Did that several times, just full throttle. And I very seldom ever give a motorcycle full throttle. I mean, you full throttle a bike when you're road racing or racing, period. I don't, I never, I never go until I feel the, until it hit the stop pin, you know. There's just no need for it. I mean, when do you ever need to do that? Well, if you're not racing. Ooh, man, I am really, really hungry. I think I still, yeah, I still have my lunch bag with me. I. There's actually a can of some kind of soup in there. Um, I ate my sandwich. There's a, oh, there's one of those uh, little Heath bars or whatever the hell they are. There's one of those in there. So if I get too freaked out, I'll stop. But I don't have any water or anything with me. But anyway, I, I'm not too terribly far from home. I'm probably half hour what am I, probably 30 miles away? Where's the road marker here? Holy crap. Yep. Yeah. I'm about 35 miles away from home. No, that's uh, from my... Holy shit. Yeah, I'm a good 40 miles from home. Oh well. I'll make it. I'm not gonna die. It's not like I don't have reserves. You ever guys ever hear the commercials the Great Wolf Lodge? This is the backside of the Great Wolf Lodge. I don't know why that would be important to you at all. Especially if you're like in the UK or something like that or down in Australia, New Zealand. Where all you nice people are at that hang out and watch this crazy old bastard riding around on motorcycles. Cycle up ahead of me here. Somebody, somebody rolling in. Wow, it's 78. It's uh, this BRP little uh, little thin thin thing is uh, is uh, not keeping all the cold air out. I guess I could turn my vents off too, couldn't I? Oh man, that blocks a lot of wind. And that's the one nice thing about them is uh, when it's cold, it actually knocks more, uh, knocks additional wind off. But one thing I've noticed is it, it makes more buffeting across the top of the little short shield. But that's all right. Oh yeah, one more thing. <laughs> no, I, uh, I was just sitting here thinking about what I was talking about. Um, two things. One I never told you. I got to talking about the gas mileage because it was the first time I rode it normal. It's uh, right back to where it was, just a hair under 42 miles to the gallon. So uh, gas mileage, not affected. But <laughs> when you do this to it and you're on it hard, it'll, uh, it will consume more than normal fuel. But as long as you drive it like a like a sane person, you'll be all right. And two, I've uh, spent almost three hours in the seat, and uh, I have to say, my little tushy gatush is all kinds of happy. Now I did, you know, take take a little bit of step. Oh, 
Jeez. That was a great big old bungle or something. Where did he hit? Wow, that was a big old wrap on my helmet. Dong. But, uh, I, you know, I was there for a little bit, so I did have a break, so technically. But, over and all, in a very short period of time, I've spent spent three hours in it. Uh, if it was uncomfortable, it would already be talking to you by now. It was about the three-hour point. Oh, do I know that guy? He's waving at me. It was about the three-hour point that uh, the Indian seat seat started talking to me pretty good. It was it was about the fourth hour. Uh, man, it was really hurt. Man, I think it was hurting bad. But it's just my butt in that seat. You know, just one of those things. Hey, that's a police officer. Hope I wasn't going too fast. Oh yeah, that's one of them nice unmarked staters. Some ones you see got people pulled over on the side of the freeway. Looks like a grandma's car came up and got them. Hey, that threshing bee, it's the 51st anniversary. Last year was, well, <laughs> I don't need to tell you what last year was, that this year is the 51st. But um, anyway, uh, um, I thought that thing was like the, I swore it was like the second or third week of, uh, of August. So I was telling Kelly, I said, oh, the spider fest thing we're going to, we're going to miss the threshing bee. You know, we haven't missed that thing in, in a few years. And, uh, like I say, it's usually the same stuff. There's there's some things that change around, but it's usually the same people, kind of got the same stuff. Their little booths or booths are even in the same <laughs> in the same place. But there's always new stuff, and you know they got different things that uh that they're selling, and so it's always it's interesting enough to pay the I don't know what it is. Ten bucks a person, five bucks a person. I don't know. Oh, look, they resealed their parking lot. It's all nice and black. That some bitch will be hot now when you get on it. But um, anyway, it is the twenty and twenty-first or something like that, or something, something like that. So if we uh, if we're not gone, the entire week and we get back we can uh, come out and go to the to the threshing bee I don't know that we'll be gone the whole whole time but anyway we're not going to miss it we can go out there one day get up early go there Sunday you got to watch though if it's if it's too quiet they'll uh a lot of the people will go, well, I'm not staying for another day. And they'll, they'll leave at the end of the evening on Saturday. Oh, snap. Because I don't want our house sitter having to deal with our mail. I was supposed to go to the post office today and tell them, hold my mail for, for next week. Yeah. I just have them. They just have to walk down to the mailbox. That's no big deal. Check the mail also. Oh, man, look at that beautiful sunset. Man, that all that smoke from them forest fires is uh, making a sunset and making it feel like it's setting much earlier. It's making it a whole lot darker than, than what it normally is at, at this time. But anyway, I, I didn't mean to come back on and talk for, jeez, there I go again. Anyway, I am officially gone now for the evening. I will chit-chat with you folks at a later time. I um, think it might be raining the rest of the week, so uh, this may be my last vlog until I'm on the, uh, on the spider. But it's not like I'm lacking any uh, videos to put up. So uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching once again and uh, thank you very much. Hope you guys have a wonderful evening if it's that time of day. 
If not, have a wonderful day or night or whatever time of day it is for you. But uh, just have a good one. We'll talk to you later now. Thanks. Bye-bye now.